Hello, everybody. It's Friday, happy hour, and it must be margaritas with margarita time. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, founder of Incandescent Radio and Incandescent TV. Thrilled to be here to produce Rita's show every Friday at five. Today, we are featuring Renee Norse, founder of Urban Wealth Management. She is a powerhouse in her own right in so very many ways. They will be talking about women and wealth, the next new normal in the US. So I'm gonna throw it over to Rita and Renee. I can't wait to hear what you guys have to teach us. Well, thank you so much. And first, Renee, it is such an honor to be here with you. Oh. I know there's so much to cover, um, but the first thing I think that we would love to know is how you came to work in the financial advice industry and the birth of urban wealth management. Hmm. I don't know if we have enough time for me to do all that. <laughs> but just really briefly, um, I was really inspired by my mom who was a single mother with three kids when she got divorced and she went back to get her master's. Um, and one of the things that occurred, this is back in the 60s, um, even though she got her master's degree and she was in the social services area and helping at hospitals, she wasn't being paid enough to take care of the three of us. And of course, unfortunately, our father did not pay enough for child support. So all that said is that one of the things that I learned during that time, when we all started getting some, some jobs, she would ask to borrow money from us to pay the bills. She would always pay us back. And so that was one of the things that inspired me about this. I like, I need to understand how to handle money and how to build it. And so that was one of the inspirational elements of getting into the financial industry. And when I started at the time, um, I was a single mom and I had a daughter and there was a pushback by a number of firms who did not want to take me on board. And there was just one um, that took me on board and it was such a wonderful experience. They were so inspirational and um, actually, which was Dean Witter. Of course, they're no longer, they got bought by Morgan Stanley. So that was a good starting point for me. And I really started focusing on working with women at that time because of the problems that women were having. And um, I definitely wanted to get away from just handling people's money. And I was specializing in working with women at that time. And it was mostly advice. They wanted advice about how to handle their financial life. So I wanted to focus on financial planning and I got my CFP back in 2003. And I started Urban Wealth Management in 2012 to step away from just managing assets, but helping people to manage their financial life. And I called it urban wealth management because that's where professional women are in major urban areas, major cities. So that's where we are. I love it. And of course, you know that I'm FPG, financial planning goddess, and I <laughs> surround myself with people who embrace financial planning. I know that your firm's focus is financial planning. Um, and you can talk about that. Um, the unique challenges women have, and what you think this um, new normal is. Absolutely. So while we are, um, we have a primary focus on financial planning, we do asset management, we're an SEC registered um, RIA. And my primary focus is obviously working with women, not at the exclusion of men, but we have an all woman team. And so in addition to working with women, I also wanted to create an environment and a culture that is supportive of women advisors, because as we know, if you've been with some major firms, that's not necessarily the case. It's starting to change now. So this next new normal though, I think, which is really important, number one, women make up the majority of the United States population. We're over 50, the last time I saw it was like 52%. We're probably close to 55% of the population. And for this decade, women will be taking over two thirds of this country's wealth through inheritance, through building out businesses, through increasing their wealth, through their employment. And so there finally is a recognition that women are worth working with and four, whereas in the past it's been primarily 
working with men because they were in control of the financial lives. But now they're starting to be that shift and there's a recognition that um, women will be in control of this country's wealth by 2030. That means we only got nine years left for the rest of this country to figure out how we're gonna work with women. I love it. And one of the things that really s stuck out with me is we working with women and for women. Um, so based on your experience, what types of platforms and support systems need to be developed, I guess, to focus on uh, serving women, as well as supporting, it's two questions, women financial advisors. <laughs> well, number one, working with um, women, uh, women, and that's true for us, no matter what our profession is, I think we prefer to work with women in whatever business it is, if it's a woman-owned business, because women understand how and what special issues that we have. We're all multitaskers. We just don't focus on doing one thing. We have a family, whether we have kids, we have parents, we have cousins or whatever, then we have a business or a profession, then we're taking care, if we are married, we're taking care of the husband. There's a bunch of stuff that we're doing. And so it's so important as women professionals to work with other women that we understand that and we have a relationship with them. And we're just not focused on how much money do you have? What do you wanna do? How much money do you wanna make on your assets? We just don't wanna be down that road. So from that perspective, and we are great. As women, we are relationship managers. We really are very strong in the relationships and taking care of people, no matter what profession that we're in. So the other side of that is being women advisors to be able to um, create an environment and a culture that is supportive of women advisors because as women, we're multitaskers. We're typically responsible of doing things at our home. So one of the positive things, a lot of negative things that happened last year, but we're seeing now that a lot of women are okay with working from home. And given that option, maybe not every day, but a few days during the week so that they can take on the responsibility of all of the other multitasks that we do. And um, being able to be supportive of that and allowing women to say, okay, you know, something came up, I need to get out of here, or take my kid to the doctor's office or whatever. You gotta be open and also, I think, be supportive of other women's ideas. So women professionals, women advisors, give us some ideas about how and what you think is best for running our business and running your practice. Whereas with other major firms, it's like, do it my way or it's wrong got to be open and allow us to move to the next stage. I absolutely love that. I think about when I started in the profession, I bought a laptop and boss said, you know, I'm not paying you for that. I was like, I didn't ask you to. <laughs> this is, I bought this for myself to do planning. So I love that. You got to yeah. be open-minded. Yeah, open absolutely. hearts and open minds. Um, yeah. Based on your experience, uh, based on your experience, um, how are in you and your team helping your clients build the lives that they deserve? One of the first things we do is um, we have, no matter if someone comes to us and say, okay, I wanna roll over my money from my previous 401k plan or whatever, we don't know what your objectives are unless we know what your timelines are, what your goals are. So we always start at that financial planning door. It's really important, we need to know that. And that's one of the things that has made very, very long-term relationships. I'm blessed in that the majority of my clients have been with me 15 to 20 years on average. Because I asked those questions and our team asked those questions, how's your family? You know, during last year, for example, during this pandemic, everybody called to find out how are you doing? How's your family? What's going on with your job? Are you okay with it? You know, is there anything that we can help you with? Um, make an introduction to some other people. And uh, a lot of the things that we posted um, on our, in our, uh, one of the examples for uh, our newsletter, and then also on our webinar page, we had a list of companies that were hiring people. It was a list of about 100 companies because none of the people got laid off. And so we listed that and a number of people were able to get jobs. 
or they called us and said, thank you so much for letting us know. So at the end of the day, as long as you're showing that you care about them as a person, that has really made a big difference in establishing a long-time relationship with them. I absolutely love it. And of course, we would be remiss if we didn't include the word legacy. Yes. Um, what do women do or need to do to create a legacy for themselves and their loved ones? Well, because we tend to be the primary parents, it's a good way to do a few things. One is to start teaching your kids about how to manage money, not investments necessarily, but you know, kids know how to spend money. But to start with um, a practice of telling them there's three things that you can do with your money. You can spend it on yourself, you can save it, and then you can set money aside to give away to a charity. Those are the three big ones. And so starting at an early age to teach them, because that will help to create a legacy for their families. The other thing is, and this certainly has definitely taken place, is to make sure that they have an estate plan. A lot of times when people come on board with us for the first time and we have something that's called um, the life heat map, and it's a checklist of items, a variety of, of topics. If we find out they don't have an estate plan, don't have a will, don't have a trust, we set a priority and, and I will tell them, go get that done first, then we will do a financial plan. Because this last year, no matter what your age is, you could have been taken down and if you don't have a financial, have an estate plan, then your family, whatever you've built up and created in terms of your income, your wealth, you bought a house that's now gone up in value. And if you don't have an estate plan, you'll lose it. Um, your family will take a long time to be able to get control over it. So as an example, those are two things, major things that we think are really important. Get an estate plan and start teaching your kids at an early age how to manage money. Got it. And then do you want to tell us about the Smart Women Savvy Money Club? <laughs> We do have the smart women savvy money because all women are smart. A lot of times when we're in certain kinds of environments, particularly in the financial industry, you can be in there with, and I've heard this for many times, couple goes in, their financial advisor is talking to the husband or the boyfriend and is not paying attention to the wife or the girlfriend or the partner. And the, the woman will raise her hand and say, well, what is X, Y, Z? And then the advisor will look at her and say, oh, you don't know that? And they make them feel incompetent and they're afraid to ask questions. So one of the things that we really focus on and we had that as part of our um, motivation element for people to join the Smart Women Saving Money is that you can raise your hand and ask a question. Nobody will ever think that that's a stupid question. And that happens a lot. So. The idea is that with that Smart Women Savvy Money, we host monthly webinars. Very few times is it about invest. We never talk about investing. We talk about investing in your financial life. And so it could be yesterday, for example, we had a topic um, about if you have a practice, you have a business, or you're planning to start a business, how do you market it? We had a speaker in who specializes, and she's been an entrepreneur since she was 12 years old. So she was an excellent speaker. Um, we will have, we had a speaker last month on real estate. We have a variety of different topics. Somebody that can talk about reverse mortgages, how that can be part of your um, retirement planning. And that's a big issue for women because we live longer. 80% of women die single, 80% of men die married. So we need to be able to be and understand the importance of being involved and engaged and taking responsibility for our financial life and making best decisions. And so we really will talk about those kinds of things through our monthly webinars. Uh, we have a Facebook page, a Facebook group, Smart Women Savvy Money on Facebook. Um, and we periodically will have uh, events like a women's summit, uh, obviously, you know, we can't do, uh, we'll have to do one virtually here, but those kinds of events where we're covering a variety of different topics that are related to our lifestyle. Um, and 
uh, next month is going to be how to be cute during this pandemic, what kind of face mask to wear, and how to, you know, uh, connect with people on Zooms. What do you need to look like from here to here? <laughs> but um, we want to help people build out and have a strong life in all elements of their life um, and not just down the financial path. I absolutely love it. I mean, in fact, someone said to me on a Zoom and you're like, Rita, your skin looks so bright. And I said, <laughs> oh, this is my primer that I use, but I love it. So Renee, can you share some um, pearls of wisdom, your takeaway? It could be one, two or three things for people um, to have I guess, clear, concise, actionable advice. Renee says, instead of Simon says, Renee says. <laughs> well, I, I might not be the one that's unique to say it, but um, there's a few things that I think are really important to understand about this decade, and I call it the next normal, um, because of the fact that women are now in these major leadership roles. And last year and this year, we've seen women step into these major leadership roles. And so now we're gonna have an opportunity to shift into a, an environment that cares about everybody, that cares a lot more about everybody. So a few things that I would say is this. Now, many firms are really looking to hire women and people of color. Just don't hire them, but support women-owned businesses. If you're with a major firm, who do you have as your compliance officer? Hire somebody that's in that role or contract with someone that's doing that. The consultants support women and people of color businesses. Just don't hire them and take a picture and say, oh, look, we hired all these people. Now, you got to be supportive in a broad, broad sense and do that. Secondly, I think in our industry, have a primary focus on connecting with people's financial life and just not their assets. Many of these major firms are finally beginning to understand that, and they're starting to have more of a focus on financial planning. They're realizing that that is important because a number of people are leaving, saying, if all you're thinking about is my money and my assets, I don't want to work with you. That's not my primary initiative. And then lastly, I would say with us as women, especially open up the door and bring other women behind you, mentor them, be their advocates and um, hire them, be it interns. That's the only way we're really gonna be able to sustain and build out our industry in particular. And, you know, particularly here, like even in our firm, we're all ladies of a certain age, but I really want to have, I have one millennial, I need to have two or three more millennials. So that way we can have a sustainable group of women of all different ages and lifestyles. So, because we're very diverse in that area and our team is diverse as well. So we really want to have a team that with people who want to, work with people who look like them, who understand what their lifestyle is. That is one way that you'll be able to sustain and be strong in your business. I love it, Renee. And where can people find you? How can people reach out to you and your team? We have um, on our site, um, they can either come into urbanwm.com and they will be able to see not only us, but our services. We also have a smart on that same site, Smart Women Savvy Money, so we'll be able to see the kind of activities that we have. And then also on our Facebook page, our Smart Women Savvy Money Facebook page, where you can see what kinds of activities and postings that we have um, to address you know, some of the topics. Now, uh, we write our own blogs, except when we have um, speakers for our, um, our Smart Women Savvy Money Host because this is another thing that's really important. Everybody that comes on is basically as a woman. We support them. We will promote them. We also have a vetted network of professionals that we refer our clients to, an accountant, mortgage person, reverse mortgage. They're all women. We don't get paid for referring them at all. 
but like I said, it's important to support women owned businesses. And so when somebody comes in, we want to make sure, hey, you need an estate planning attorney. Here's three women for you to check with, see which one you like. Um, so those are some of the some of the ideas, but certainly on our website, we have that. And uh, we have a great um, theme, which is gig, get in gear, get your financial life in gear. And that's the primary focus of what we do. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much for Thank tuning you. in with us for Margaritas with Margarita. <laughs> well, being here on the left coast, it's not margarita time for me. It's just water time. <laughs> we have a special glass. <laughs> margarita. Uh, well, awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Rita. 15 minutes or less, sometimes a little bit more of great financial advice from women to women. Uh, Rita, thank you so much for being the host of this show. Tell us about next week's guest when it, Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern, we bring on Lily. Tell us a little about her. So we are bringing on Lily. Lily is the founder of the Association of Divorced Financial Planners, and she is going to be talking about divorce financial planning. Now, no one plans to get a divorce, but you need to prepare your finances. So she is going to be um, tuning in with us next week. Excellent. Awesome. 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, you know, my, my book, Why Divorce? Five Reasons to Leave is definitely talking about that topic and more. And Rita is going to be talking about that as a di divorce coach. Um, so it's, it's really exciting. All of these things that are impacting women um, and Rita is also, of course, the cover story of the April issue of Incandescent Women magazine, where we help women flex their financial muscles. So Renee, it's just been a pleasure to hear your advice, your solidarity around women supporting other women. I mean, there's nothing better than that. So thank you. Best of luck to you. All of the links to your websites will be in the liner notes on margaritachang.tv, margaritachangradio.com, and of course, Rita's website, margaritachang.com. So we look forward to talking to all of you again next Friday. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. And we Thank look you. forward to more. Bye. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.